Hey, this is Bill, PowerStrokeHelp.com. Um, you know, there's really very few things as annoying as going down the road and or, or stopping somewhere and needing your four-wheel drive. And you turn this little knob here, okay? You want to put your foot on the brake, you turn the knob, and then the light will come on that it says it's going in four-wheel drive, but yet the front wheels don't turn. So that's what this is about. We're going to talk about this type of four-wheel drive. Now, if you got the shifter on the floor down there, that's manual. You got to manually set your hubs. When you turn this knob, there's two things that happen. Okay, of the two things that simultaneously happen when you turn the switch, is there's an electrical servo underneath the truck that selects high and low range and engages this front drive shaft. Now I'm I'm in two-wheel drive at the moment, so this drive shaft spins, but this drive shaft engages. Then the drive shaft goes forward to the front axle, okay? This spins, the, this spins the, the pinion and the ring and goes out to the wheels out here, and the axles out here move. Now this is an open front diff, so, but you can see when I turn the drive shaft out here that it turns the axle out here. Now, this happens, it's, it's this, this particular part of the, of the uh, four-wheel drive system actually is a, a really good system. It works very, very well. Uh, every now and then up north, you guys need to take these off and put some grease in them. Um, but down in the south, this, this particular part never goes bad. I mean, they just don't go bad. What we're going to talk about here is the other thing that happens simultaneously. What we're going to deal with, what we're going to deal with in, in this video is talk about the auto locking part of the hubs here. 99% of the time, if you put the truck into four wheel drive and the front tires aren't working, you can come out and you can manually lock your front hubs. Okay? That's how you do it. Clockwise is locked, counterclockwise is unlocked. All right? But what we're going to talk about here is the automatic locking of the hubs. The other thing that happens when you turn that switch on your dash, the second thing, is this little box right here gets a signal to switch. This is a vacuum box. This is your, your front hubs are actuated by vacuum. It clicks this, this switch on and it sends vacuum down to your hubs. Now, diesel trucks do not make vacuum. Diesel engines do not make vacuum, so they have to have a vacuum pump. And a 6.4 is located over here. Uh, basically the same pump, and this whole system is the same system all the way back to 1999. In fact, the pump looks identical all the way up to modern times. And they use this same Mickey Mouse switch that likes to hang up. Sometimes it's the switch. So what you have to do is you, you turn the truck on, you flip the thing in the four-wheel drive, and you have to see if you're getting vacuum. First of all, is the vacuum pump working? Okay. And then is the vacuum being moved to this line? Now this line goes down to the hubs. Okay, you can see the vacuum line come down here, and it tees off, and one goes to the driver's side and one goes to the passenger side. And on top of the hub here, you can see it right there. That line right there is your vacuum line. If any of the seals inside this hub are not installed correctly, whether it's this seal out here or the seals inside here or the seals or the seals on the front end here are not installed correctly on these hubs, then the vacuum system will not work. Okay? The vacuum actually pulls it pulls from it pulls from this end and pulls through the hub and draws the um, the the lock down actually out here at the plastic part where the manual uh, lock is um, it, it draws it down if that little seal where it goes in is is not working correctly so it's real important to make sure that when you install one of these hubs that you install it correctly and you don't pinch the seals all right so yesterday. We're riding back from our little film session on this truck here, and this right front hub started making a funky noise, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you got a bearing going bad, all right? Well, it wasn't what you might have thought, see? So, so Dennis, they, this bearing is what, about three years old that you had on here, or Moog? Yeah, three years old. And you said that uh, your wife had somebody put it on the truck for you? Yeah. Well, what happened was, is that 
Inside here where the axle goes through, there's a little roller bearing. And if you don't grease that thing up real good, then that thing will go hot box on you and take a shit. And it'll tear your it'll tear your axle up. Right here. See this axle's ruined. I wouldn't run it. So luckily, you know, we were able to make a phone call and get another bearing, but luckily we had another axle sitting up there on in, in the woods out there in the pile that was good. And that you know, Dennis is over. Dennis is over here emery clothing to make sure it's right, but by God, put some grease on this inner bearing when you guys put these hub bearings on. I've probably seen a hundred of these things come in, and the bearing, the actual bearing itself inside here is fine and not a thing wrong with it, but it'll tear the shit out of these axles. So, you know, do the hub bearing right, put a lot of grease on it, because all the time that you're riding down the road, and this, and the hub is turning, and the axle is sitting still. The axle's riding on this little bitty roller bearing. It's real important that you put plenty of grease in here. There's no such thing as too much grease. And this problem won't happen to you. The other thing too, you mentioned, what Mike told me was uh, the little breather tube. Um, if it's popped off, which I've noticed mine popped off before, mm -hmm. and if you submerge it in water, it's there goes water right into all that shit, right? Oh yeah. So, okay. So, if so, so Mikey, here, Mikey, just just be, okay. Just start from the beginning about the breather tube. Just say right, the other well, thing. Well, we take it apart. We see all this rust. Now, this is very common for this bearing to cause this, to have this problem due to water intrusion. Okay. All right. Not so. Not uh, you know. It's you definitely want the grease in there, but water gets in there. These parts rust, and then right. this is where you. How does that up. water get in there? Okay. In this case. You know this 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 hub assembly and everything has several seals on it. Right. Right. It's supposed to allow it to uh, to maintain a vacuum for automatic, uh, and it also keeps the water out. In his case, what we did a little research and found that the tube over here on the that vacuum tube where it goes in the vacuum tube. Well, that tube was off of off the truck, <laughs> and at some point he submerged the front end. And well, I mean, it rains in Florida. Water got into this assembly and rotted out this bearing. Yeah. So. And this all got started because we had to put, because the automatic four wheel drive wouldn't work yesterday when we were taking pictures in the sand. Put the button on, there's no four wheel drive. I hear the back end hopping, front end, front end ain't doing nothing. We locked the hubs, but then when we unlocked the hubs, this noise started. So one thing leads to another, but at least it tore up here where we can do something about it. Tore up here, and one of them got sideways, and yeah, it tore that axle up. But you know, guys, pay attention to what you're doing so you don't kill these hubs. I mean, these hubs are several hundred dollars a piece plus labor to put them on, and you got to make sure that the little hoses are on them. Make sure you grease them. Make sure the seals are right. You know, it's the key to happiness is taking care of your truck the right way. I'm gonna take a minute here and show you an idea about how to be able to do some service to these front hubs. Uh, there's no real service procedure for these hubs are supposedly not serviceable but I got one little trick to show you look these hubs go through water they go through salt they go underwater they go through mud they're being dealt with all the time I'm gonna use a, a, a lubricant here that's actually a it's actually an arch oil product made for guns uh, especially good stuff for guns that have become a little rusty or crusty this stuff here it's a penetrant but you don't need to use the arch oil gun gun oil to do what we're gonna do it's just what I happen to have on hand and I just like arch oil stuff, it's always been really good to me. Look, you can use any type of oil, uh, any type of light grease, um, anything that, that is not so thick that it gobs up, but it actually flows. Don't want to use WD-40 for what I'm about to show you because it's a dry lubricant. You want to use something that is oil that's actually going to lubricate. I'll tell you some really good stuff. Is PB Blaster makes a garage door oil. Uh, grease that you spray on the tracks for garage doors, man. And that stuff, I've seen that stuff works in miracles at certain points when PB wasn't quite heavy enough and wasn't isn't a very good lubricant. But the PB garage door stuff you buy at Home Depot, that'd be perfect for this application because it's a penetrant and a lubricant. Uh, that's what I'm trying to get at. A penetrant where it can get in there where there's any sort of dirt, grease, mud, anything that's hanging this up to help break it break it free. And if that doesn't do it, you're going to have to take it apart and clean it. But you know, start with a good oil uh, and penetrant to keep these hubs loose and working like they should. What we, do, what we do here is you take the vacuum hose loose, okay? And in this case, I'm going to use arch oil gun oil. I'm going to have to take the lid. And squirt you a liberal amount of that stuff in there, okay? And that'll keep all those little pieces in there that go round and round and round nice and lubricated especially even that little bearing I just showed you in the previous video to keep all that lubricated 
uh, so it doesn't burn up on you. You know, you guys take these things through the water and the snow and all this stuff, and nobody ever cares about these hubs or thinks about these front hubs. And this is something that can be done. Now, you can take off the ABS sensor and do this, but the sliding off this hose is just a whole bunch easier as far as I can see. And just, you know, squirt you about a, I don't know, half an ounce, quarter of an ounce in there. Um, you can use regular Arch Oil 9100. There's no reason you can't use that. Um, the gun oil has a little more of a penetrant in it. Uh, it may be better. Um, but really, just about anything you put in there to help it lubricate that will ooze down in there. Uh, not a heavy, thick grease, but something that, that oozes, that actually will, will slide around and move. An oil of some sort would work the best. Do this this side, and this side's actually easier. You know, the passenger side, I mean, driver's side's actually a little easier to get at. And do the same thing on both sides. Now you've done a big part to help your front hub survive as long as possible. And of course you guys with manual uh, 4x4 two-wheel drive, don't be out here hunting this thing in your driveway. Don't be, don't be having your wife send me pictures that you're a crazy person out here doing these things. On Be emailing me how her husband has lost his mind since he's been watching my videos. Seriously guys, if you have two-wheel drive, don't be crawling under there looking for this. Also, if you're watching my videos and you're not watching them on PowerStrokeHelp.com, you're really missing where the action is. You need to go to the website PowerStrokeHelp.com and check us out because there's a lot of information on there that could be very useful to you as a PowerStroke owner to keep your truck on the road as long as possible. Remember, if you press the Arch Oil button, all the proceeds from Arch Oil uh, go to help train a vet, the nonprofit organization that I run, to help veterans ease their way back into civilian life. Thank you for all your support for making PowerStrokeHelp.com the number one stop for power stroke owners on the internet.